What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game Kenny Free or whatever in the call. I am coming to the realization I am really bad at my job. I have tried to fire up this episode another 20 times. I can't do it. Let's talk about today's games. I know you are super excited because the Bulls, they did something legendary, but in a negative way. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all this type of jazz. Let's get into today's slate of games. We'll start off with the Bulls. I won't spend too much time on it because I know 90% of the league don't give a damn about the Bulls, but I'm going to talk to my Bulls fans here. It is um, super impressive. How the Bulls find a way to blow games. They can't just lose, right? The Bulls can't just lose games. It always got to be something super legendary. Where, like, you know that little meter that ESPN has where, like, it's a 99% chance at this point in the game that that team is going to win. The fact that the Bulls have been in 99 a couple times this season with the OKC game and then tonight and still blow those games is crazy. It's impressive. Similar to, like, when Cody Parker hit the uprights two times. I hate it because I'm a fan. But it's impressive. You know what I'm saying? I have to keep reminding my fellow Bulls fans out there. We are in a transitional year. We have a new front office. This front office is looking at the players that the previous front office drafted and trying to figure out, this is the guy I want to keep. These are the guys we trade away. And that, that is very, very relevant right now. So when I'm looking at these games, of course I'm upset that we lost. Nobody wants to see their favorite team lose a game. But it was over in like 10 minutes, bro. It was over like 10 minutes. I, I mean, because I know that in two years down the line, 90% of this roster won't be here. We're not competing for anything at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I want to see wins. But I know things are going to change soon. You know? How they're going to change? I don't know. Like, if the Bulls traded Zach Levine right now, because there's rumors that the Knicks are looking at him. If they traded him right now, I'll make a reaction video, talk about what I think about it. But I can be a fan of Zach Levine if he's in New York. I can be a fan of Zach Levine if he's somewhere else. I just want my team to be good again. If that means trading the whole roster, get everybody out of here. I like these guys. But get them all out of here. Um, and let's be honest, this current core, there's a ceiling to it. Um, and, and that ceiling is what? Maybe making the playoffs? I don't want to just maybe make the playoffs. I want to win games. Um, but on the other side of things, this game is not blown by the Bulls if anybody other than Damian Lillard is at point guard. <laughs> that man, Damian Lillard, is so, so different. And he was basically shooting um, open threes all game because the way that the Bulls defend the pick and roll, the drop coverage is still really, really bad. And when you have an elite player like Damian Lillard, he's going to hit 90% of those. And that's what it felt like today. But Damian Lillard, um, the fact that they're missing CJ, they were Robert Covington his first game back, they're missing Derrick Jones Jr. now, Yusuf Nurkic. Yeah, that's four super quality players. And the fact that they're still afloat as a team is just a testament to how great this man Damian Lillard is is and you know what i'm gonna parallel him right now to another person that we're gonna talk about later in the episode and kimball walker and and damian lillard has elevated to the point where like even if his shot is not falling which seems like very rare for him now it feels like 40 point games are just the normal for him he can elevate his teammates the fact that he's getting nine assists a game with this roster is crazy and you if you remember damian lillard and kimball walker won't similar similar like levels at one point and obviously Damian Lillard's up here now Kimball Walker's you know not down not up there with him but we're gonna talk about Kimball Walker a little bit later but Damian Lillard special guy Let's talk about the second game of the day which was the Bucks losing to the Charlotte Hornets I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again Bud cannot be the head coach on a championship team I'm saying it I'm saying it you know what I was kind of hesitant to, to really put it out there but it's a fact I don't care what the defensive numbers say oh this team is top five defensively any team that hits their threes because there's a lot of open ones against the Bucs, will win against the Bucs. You give the, the Boston Celtics the same threes that you gave the Hornets, you don't just lose by 12 here, you lose by 20. The Hornets are not necessarily a great three-point shooting team. You give these same shots to the Jazz. I know the Jazz aren't competing with, with them in the conference, but the same shot to a team like the Jazz, you're losing that game. And ultimately, you're losing the series to the top teams because Coach Bud has them like, these are good defenders. Drew Holiday, great defender. Um, Giannis, defensive player of the year. Brooke Lopez, defensive, all defensive team conversations. Um, um, Chris Middleton, Dante DiVincenzo, all positive defenders. But, like, the way Coach Bud plays them defensively, it's kind of like babying them. Let them defend, bro. Let them defend. I don't understand it. I won't understand it. And as long as he's the coach, I don't think this team is going as far as you as you want them to go. And what's scary about that is they won't, they won't fire Coach Bud, right? So the ceiling on this team right now, in my eyes, is like, not winning the championship, right? Drew Holiday is a free agent this offseason. It's, it's a, just some thoughts. Um, the Charlotte Hornets, man. LaMelo Ball is, is blossoming into a star. And I was in the camp, and I'm kind of still in the camp of like, start LaMelo Ball, start LaMelo Ball. But 
I read something on Twitter um, a little while ago that is like so true. It was like, I, it don't really matter who's starting. It's about who's finishing. And LaMelo Ball's finishing games. I know a lot of that had to do with Terry Rozier going down with an injury, but LaMelo Ball finished his game because he had stretches in this game, in that fourth quarter, where he was legitimately dominating. <sighs> the rookie dominating. Malik Monk getting 22 minutes is music to my ears. Malik Monk is a guy that I believe can be a Jordan Clarkson type player, a heat check, I can get you some buckets type player, six man type player. And of course the off the court things have to be fixed and I don't know if if, if those have been fixed, but if he can st- quit playing. That's basically what all I wanted from him. I remember when Laurie Marketing got drafted, um, there were some Bulls fans like, why do we draft Laurie Marketing when a for sure guy like Malik Monk is still on the board? I guess he ain't that for sure. But I'm happy that he's getting minutes here. Him, LaMelo Ball, and Miles Bridges playing together, magnificent. Keep that keep that going, James Brego. Keep that going. This is a good win for your team. Um, Next team or game we have to talk about is the Rockets. I don't know how many game win streak this is for the Rockets, but four, five maybe? They have this identity now. I think it was Kevin O'Connor that tweeted it after their last game. Um, that they are the second best defense in the league since the James Harden trade. And you can see that. Um, John Wall was all defensive player before his injury. Victor Depot, all defensive player. You got PJ Tucker. That man's a fire hydrant. Nobody can move him. Um, Christian Woods, a good defender. And then Jay Sean Tate has shown as an undrafted rookie, he can defend. And the, the identity of this team is like, we all have chips on our shoulders, bro. We all do. Victor Depot's chip is kind of fake. He's like, I just want to play for a team that, that wants me. Even though the Indiana Pacers offered him $20-plus plus million a year, they wanted you, bro. They legitimately <laughs> they wanted to keep you around, but you didn't want to stay there. Um, but if that's the motivation he needs to be great again, take that motivation. Him, uh, John Wall, Christian Wood, DeMarcus Cousins, Jay Sean Tate. These are all guys. Daniel House, these are all guys with big chips on their shoulders, and they come out, they defend very well, and John Wall hit four threes. And if John Wall is shooting four for six from three, they're probably going to win games, bro. It's just realistic. Uh, for the Pelicans, I would love to see uh, uh, Lewis Jr. get more minutes. I still don't know if it's Kyra or Kara Lewis Jr. I haven't watched a single Pelicans game with the sound on this year. Um, but it reminded me of my career in 2K, where like he got minutes late in the fourth quarter when the game was pretty much over. But he made the most out of those minutes. Just showing Stan Van Gundy, put me in the rotation. He can shoot better than majority of people on his roster, and um, and that helps. That would help him. At least it should help him get minutes. Uh, Zion is still being very dominant. I think he's only played 40-ish NBA games, and he's dominating stuff. So, eventually, like I said, I would love to see the Pelicans grow um, not on national TV. So, this was a loss, but did they grow a little bit? Maybe. I don't really know. Jimmy Butler came back. Ooh, and it's so crazy how much one player coming back can really change things. The the Miami Heat were down in the dumps. And I know they're still missing Gordon Dragic, who didn't play today. They're still missing Avery Bradley. But Jimmy Butler came in, and he is in the in the classification of Trey Young and James Harden when it comes to drawing fouls. And I know 90% of the viewers out there don't like the idea of people, you know, searching for fouls, but it just helps the team a lot more. I mean, that's more energy, bro. I know it's, it ain't long. It's, what, a minute and a half at the free throw line? But a minute and a half break? I'll take it. He is, he is such a leader. And I think that my team had him at the age of 28, and he's like, nah, we don't want him anymore. We don't believe he's good enough sad i love to see him succeed though i love to see him succeed and it's eventually when Gordon Dragic is back um and Avery Bradley's back in the rotation we're gonna slowly see the Miami Heat rise up the ranks of the the standings and be right back into the playoffs um on the other side of things the Kings I like to see that De'Aaron Fox is shooting more threes and there was a period late in the fourth quarter um they were down by like 10 or 15 or so and he had like a takeover moment I love to see De'Aaron Fox like that because he's one of my favorite younger point guards in the league but the thing about De'Aaron as quick as he is as easy it can be for him to potentially draw fouls he's got to make free throws he's got to be able to hit free throws and his his percentages have slowly gone down every single year I think he's down to like 70 percent this year which isn't terrible but for a point guard that's about attacking the rim you want him to be a lot better you want him to be a lot better um and as soon as he gets a lot better I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he'll be more confident with going to the rim and he's not he's already super confident in that as a team they didn't get a lot of free throws and <laughs> And then Jimmy Jimmy Butler outshot them from the free throw line as a team. Um, but I like to see De'Aaron Fox have those takeover type moments. That's all you can really ask for. They were just on a big game win streak. But I think also, I have to keep putting this into perspective. I think the, the Pelicans are here too. There are a lot of teams today that are on a second half of back-to-back. Like the prime example of this is the Spurs. Um, Kelda Johnson played all of his minutes in the first three quarters and didn't play a single minute in the fourth. And yeah, I'm like, oh, why is Pop doing this? Oh, it's probably because they're on the back, the, the second half of back-to-back. And Derek White is back. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind when we're talking about some of these teams. Let's get to the national televised game. I don't know how I got this long to get here. But 
I, I like this game. Um, grinded out game. Neither of the team looked really good, especially down the stretch. The Lakers looked dreadful. They they should have lost this game if we've been honest with each other. From Anthony Davis turnover to LeBron turnover to Anthony Davis missed shot, two missed shots from Anthony Davis. Uh, Dennis Schroeder turnover late in the fourth. The last couple possessions for the Lakers were disgusting, and the fact that they walk out of here with a W is is a is a miracle. Um, and that doesn't mean that the Celtics outplayed them either because the Celtics really struggled today too. But you would think with all the things that, that the Lakers were doing that the Celtics would be able to do it. And this is what I said on Twitter. Um, I understand the notion of, of just letting the players play. It's happening a lot throughout the course of, of the last couple of years. I think about the shot that Steph Curry hit on the OKC Thunder. It was a rebound and he hit it from the logo basically. Game over. So I understand the idea of letting it play. Um, the Lakers didn't have time to set up their defense. But the moment that Jalen Brown start fumbling that, that ball, shout out to Alex Caruso for getting back. Um, he fumbled the ball. That would be a moment for me personally. And I'm not Brad Stevens. I'm not a legendary coach. I'm not an NBA coach, so take it with a grain of salt. That would be the moment personally for me that I call timeout. But at the end of the day, the Celtics got a good look. It happened to be from Kimball Walker, who can't hit a goddamn thing right now. And we have to have a conversation about Kimball Walker right now. I was a game six coming back. And I'm not one of the people that's willing to say that he is was, but obviously he is not the player that, that we want him to be. Um, and I think that might be the – it's two things that is really, really struggling or really – Preventing me from from saying that the Celtics are next level, right? Kemba Walker at this point, what is he? Their fourth best player. You you paying him thirty six million dollars is crazy. He's like their fourth best player. If Kemba Walker come out here and give you half the production that he gave you last season, I think you're good, right? He's got to stay healthy. He he. Like I said, I'm gonna parallel it to Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard has gone to the point where he was a guy that was like, if he is not scoring, he's not really helping the team. Kemba Walker is the embodiment of that. He doesn't play make for his teammates. He doesn't have that second aspect for a game that he's won for 12 to impact the game. At the end of the day, in this game, he was a liability offensively and defensively, right? And, I, I mean, at this age, he's not going to develop into an elite playmaker or anything, but those are the type of things you would want from Kemba Walker. It's kind of been the criticism we've had from for him his entire career. Like, how much is, is he elevating his teammates, right? But at the end of the day, him not playing up to that level, and then, then they don't have a bench. The bench play, god-awful. God got off. As good as Jaylen, the Jays are, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are, they can only do so much. When they're not in the game, the team just doesn't know how to flow. And I did like the minutes between Daniel Tice and um and Daniel Tice and, and Sammy Ojale um worked really, really well together. I like that. But the bench just don't have anything. Jeff Teague has been god off of this year. And I thought that was gonna be a good sign for them. Jeff Teague is slowly going down. I, I hope for Boston Celtics fans sake that maybe they're a player in the buyout market people are trying to get Danny Ainge to make trades but I don't know what trades you can make what assets do you are you are you giving up picks to improve your bench I don't really know I, I don't really know I don't really know but I do like this team a lot I just don't I think Kimball Walker's play and the lack of bench scoring lack of bench spark is what's going to prevent them from potentially winning a championship as good as Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are because both of them are locks to be in a be an all-star this year they need a little bit more help. And you you would wish that Kemba Walker is that help because you're paying him to be the guy. Um, but he hasn't been. He hasn't been. And I don't know if he'll get back to that. If you can get half, a, a three-fourths of Kemba Walker from last year, this is a super, super scary team. I'm happy that from what we know right now, the the Marcus Smart injury is just a calf strain and not anything more severe than that because it did look bad. You know, non-contact injuries are always super scary. I hope that it stays as that and never it doesn't get elevated to something else after some tests. The Grizzlies continue to win after, what, two weeks off, it feels like. But I mentioned earlier, uh, Kelton Johnson didn't play in the fourth quarter. I think that the, the Spurs are trying to figure out a way to win this game um, on the second half of a back-to-back. Derek White came back, and he looked really good in his first game back. But ultimately, the Memphis Grizzlies just have this team basketball thing. I love to see Jetty out there. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not Jetty. I'm sorry. Jitty. Did I say that right? Jitty out there. Um, and John Conchar getting a hell of boards. Um, Dylan Brooks' defense is so good. And it's not even just, like, good on paper or, like, good when you watch it. He's just trying to get under people's skin. And that's what he did today to DeMar DeRozan. And uh, if you got a player like that that can also hit some shots, pretty solid. Um, the <laughs> the Mavericks lose another game. They played better, though. They did play better today. But the thing about them is that their offense is so stagnant. It's so, it's so James Harden, Houston Rockets, like, um, where it's like, we're going to have four people stand around and let Luka at the top of the key do what Luka can do. And I think there's a ceiling on the offense like that. Um, especially if they're not a legendary offense like last year. The Suns get a big win where Chris Paul looked like the point guard, and then DeAndre Aiden was dominating. Domin dominating. You, you get me? 
um, on the glass in the fourth quarter. He was very, very crucial. Um, they were missing Chris Asperzingis today, and Devin Booker didn't play either. But they could have really used Chris Stapps, you know, on the glass a little bit, even though he's not like a really great rebounder. But what they what he was going against would have been a lot harder if Chris Stapps was down there. And then lastly, we do have the Warriors winning. I will eventually spend a lot of time on the Warriors because I have been super impressed with some of the stuff they've done. Um, but I only watch the third quarter of this game because Klay Thompson was commentating, and Klay Thompson is a joy. I wish he was playing basketball. <sighs> I did it. Take 21. Got through it. Leave a like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I'll see y'all soon. Call game.